In today's insane story time, this Karen ruins her own son's wedding. Yes, this Karen couldn't let anything not go her way, so she literally ruins her own son's wedding on his very special day. This is an insane story, so strap in, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and let's just jump right into it. Anyway, so we're going to call the subscriber who submitted this story Aiden. So anyways, Aiden was in his late 20s. And he met this girl who we're going to call Caroline, right? And they got along really well. However, Aiden had a very uh, complicated, to say the least, relationship with his mother as, you know, I don't know, just like growing up, it was always like a little tense or whatever. And his mom was uh, admittedly a Karen, right? Definitely base definition of a Karen. So anyways, uh, this was another example of her being a big Karen because she was like, just disapproving of Caroline for really no good reason. Like, it wasn't like Caroline was, you know, not doing anything and super unmotivated or really mean or had some kind of legitimate reason why the mom would be a little bit, I don't know, defensive. I think as a parent, you should kind of chill out when it comes to telling your kids who they should marry. But I can at least understand if, like, your child is going to marry someone that you see a bajillion red flags and you know that they're just young, dumb, and in love and, like, you don't want them to make life-changing decisions, especially when you get married officially. It's, like, 50% of your income. It's a big deal to get married. However, there was literally nothing wrong with Caroline. She was, like, the most normal girl ever, dude. But for some reason, you know, uh, the subscriber's Karen mom... Aiden's Karen's mom just would never let go of the fact that she's like, oh, you can't marry that girl. You can't marry that girl. You can't marry that girl again and again and again and again. It was getting kind of annoying. So yeah, anyways, uh, eventually um, Aiden does propose to this girl. It's a whole thing or whatever. So Aiden's mom and dad are separate. They separated. Aiden's dad is like, hey, yo, bro, I can't take this Karen anymore, dude. I'm out of here. So he was really happy. Uh, Caroline's parents were really happy. Aiden's cousins, his aunt, uncle, everyone else in both of their families was super excited because they knew how good they were for each other, except one individual. And I bet you guys can get which I, I bet you guys can guess which individual was not so happy of Aiden and Caroline getting married. If you guess the Karen, then you are yes, correct. Yeah. So, uh, anyways, right? Uh, Aiden eventually he he doesn't tell his mom right away because he's like, oh god. I already know how she's going to react to this. I already know how she's going to act. I know she's going to be like, I don't give you permission. And as your mom, I'm not going to let you do this. You're going to ruin your life. I'm going to whatever, write a lot of stuff. And here's the thing. Aiden's a grown, a grown freaking man. And it wasn't like his mom was like funding his entire life too. He was a hundred percent of independent, but he just kind of believed that, you know, family is like one of the only, like if everything in the world gets reduced, like down to nothing, like you lose all your friends a lot of times, like, family may or may not be the only thing you have left. So Aiden really put in the effort to stay in touch with everybody in his family. His, you know, his mom, his dad, everyone. Even if some family members, a.k.a. the mom, was a little bit of a Karen all the time. So eventually he calls up his mom. He's like, hey, mom, I want to let you know that I proposed to Caroline. And she's like, you cannot, you need to undo that right now. You're not allowed to get married to that woman. Da, 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 I forbid it. And like, bro, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what you're trying to do here. Like your son is completely independent. You really think he's just going to not going to marry this girl that he's basically madly in love with and just it would be a great marriage, right? Just because you forbid it, what are you going to do? Cut the funding, which he has none of? Like, what are you going to do? Like show up to his house with a crowbar? Like, bro, what are you trying to do right now? So uh, yeah, I, I, I don't really know what the Karen is uh, thinking, but... At this point, Jeff, or not, sorry, not Jeff, uh, Aiden kind of saw that coming. So he's like, yeah, okay, uh, I'll talk to you later, mom, bye, and hangs up the phone. Because he just kind of needed to tell, like, he just needed to tell, right? He just needed to tell her and stuff like that or whatever. Yeah, so anyways, okay, almost right away, everyone else in the family started to plan the wedding because I don't know if you guys know, but weddings are a really big deal and it, at least it takes a lot of planning. Like even if you want to have a really low-key wedding and just invite a few people, there's still so much money and planning and headache that goes into it. So thankfully, everyone else in the family was trying to help out. That is, of course, the Karen mother was not. Apparently, or at least Aiden's dad told Aiden that the Karen, his Karen mom was trying to, at every single point, throw like some kind of problem in, like try and make things more difficult, try and literally sabotage the wedding from ever happening. However, the wedding does happen. So when it's time to give out invitations, you know, Aiden calls up his mom individually. He's like, look, I know you aren't approving of this wedding. I know you're not approving of the marriage, but at the end of the day, you're my mom. 
So I am extending an invitation for you to come. And she's like, oh, what day is it? She knew what day it was, but she still said that anyways. He's like, uh, August 28th. And she's like, I don't know if I can make that. I am very busy. And Aiden, in the back of his head, is like, oh, please don't show up, bro. Like, I'm not trying to have you here anyways. Like, it was literally a courtesy, dude. Like, I'm extending that as a courtesy. I really don't want you here, man. Like, do what you want to do. Don't show up if you don't want to show up. That's 100% cool with me. But she was really just bluffing, trying to just show him that, like, oh, she doesn't approve of it, me, 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 all that kind of stuff, right? So, uh, yeah, sure enough, um, she does show up. So let's skip ahead to the wedding. Many months later, it is eventually time for the wedding. Things are going really well. And if you don't know, in some weddings, there is a, like, a something called a rehearsal dinner, and that is the dinner you have before the actual wedding. So you get all the guests together, whatever, lots of fun. And the rehearsal dinner was happening at this place that was near where the wedding was happening. So anyways, uh, Aiden, Caroline, everyone else in the family, they show up. It's really great mood. It's just like the vibes are immaculate, bro. I mean, two people are getting married. They're in love, man. Life is good. Well, the vibes were good, I should say. I gotta clarify that the vibes did not stay good forever. Because sure enough, the Karen makes herself, or makes her presence very clear. So she walks in and she just like, she kind of has this aura, this kind of energy of like disapproval, anger, I'm upset, yeah, yeah, all that kind of stuff, right? And it completely clashed with everyone else's jolly, nice, like love is in the air, this is so exciting type energy. We're about to have a good dinner, good food, whatever. It totally clashed with that, bro. So yeah, sure enough, you know, the Karen just sits down. It's like, meh, 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 meh. And they're all just kind of like looking at her. And she just starts sighing really loud. And Aiden looks over and like, he kind of placed like his mom kind of far down, like away from him and Caroline. And uh, I mean, she was maybe upset about that. But bro, I really don't blame him. I mean, his mom is low-key a loose cannon. Like, I, I don't know, if she's trying to, like, sabotage the wedding, which she already was, and spoiler, she really tries and basically does, that, you know, he, he doesn't want her to sit right next to him and his bride, like, I don't know. But she apparently was huffing, puffing, grunting, being really annoying, right? Eventually, like, the menus are served, so basically a waiter comes around and gives everyone a menu. And the Karen looks over the menu, and she starts making a big fuss, like, nothing on here appeals to me. This, nothing, I, this all looks terrible. I don't want any of this. Just saying like super Karen stuff and bro, it was like a really good menu with a lot of options. Normally at weddings, like dude, I'm gonna be honest, you get one option, you get like one or two options, like meat option or vegetarian option, or you eat nothing and have a glass of water. Those are literally your options, dude. But this one was like four to five different meals on there. It really covered the range. There's a vegetarian option, chicken, steak, pasta. And it wasn't like super exotic where maybe it would make sense that the Karen was like not used to that kind of stuff. It was very just basic food, bro. It was very just standard, but it was really good. It was just like standard food that was very simple, something that everyone would like. However, it's just done really well. Yeah. So uh, anyways, Aiden kind of notices this and is just like, oh God. He kind of turns to Caroline like, yep, we're going to have to deal with a lot of this. Like just be prepared. Like this is really annoying, but whatever. And so sure enough, the Karen is having a whole fuss when the waiter comes over. She demands like a really complex order, a really complicated, difficult order or something like that. And, you know, the waiter's like, okay, we can try and do that. But, you know, our kitchen isn't really prepared because the kitchen was prepared to serve these types of meals for the wedding. However, they still went out of their way to make sure that everyone was satisfied, that everyone was happy. So sure enough, Karen got what she wanted, bro. Like the Karen got what she wanted. Um... Whether that was best for everyone or not, it doesn't really matter in the Karen's world, bro. As long as she's winning, then that's all that matters. So yeah, uh, the rest of the dinner was okay. I mean, actually, I should say, the dinner was great. It was just the fact that the Karen mom was there that was completely like, I don't know, like ru- not ruining everything, but really just putting a damper. Thankfully, though, uh, Aiden and uh, Caroline, they were sitting on like the opposite side of a really, 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 really long table. So they didn't have to deal with most of the Karen's sh- shenanigans, nonsense, etc. right? They didn't have to deal with most of that, which is really nice. And uh, yeah, shenanigans. I'm not going to make that the secret word. Don't worry. I don't even think I can spell that. But anyways, right, so the Karen is sitting at the end of the table. Table is the secret word of the day. So if you made it this far into the video, comment table, 
down below. And also, while you're in the comment section, there's a pinned comment, and the first link is to Spotify. We have a Spotify account, or I have a Spotify account, where you can listen to these stories as podcasts. Make sure to go ahead and follow it. And if you're listening right now on Spotify, rate the podcast five stars. I would really appreciate it. And also, in the pinned comment is a link to another channel I have. Please subscribe. I think you will enjoy it too. Yeah, but uh, anyways, uh, the rest of the night was pretty good. Things really go down, and things get really bad on the actual day of the wedding. That is where the Karen actually somewhat successfully ruins the wedding, at least for a little bit. So yeah, the night before, you know, once again, uh, basically, uh, Aiden's dad is the goat. He's letting him know everything that's going wrong. And Aiden's dad lets Aiden know, hey, by the way, son, uh, your mom is not having a good time. And Aiden responds, well, I mean, how much can I do about that? I spent, like, we... He basically was like, look, this is a great wedding. This is a beautiful wedding. There is nothing that I can do because I know the only reason why she is angry and mad, and not just because she's a Karen, but because she doesn't like my wife. And there's, I'm not going to change that. There's nothing that's going to change that's going to make her happy. And Aiden said, it's like, dude, I get it. I totally agree. I just want to let you know that she's been talking to all the guests. And this, like, I just want to let you, I don't know. She's, like, talking about how she's going to have to put an end to this. And that she's gonna make sure her son doesn't make a choice, like a reg- uh, make a choice that he will regret and pay for. And he's like, I don't know what that means, but you know, your mom is very dramatic, and she uh, loves you very much, I guess. And they both kind of laughed after that. And he's like, Look, son, but on the serious, bro, like, or the serious son, like, I don't know what she's gonna do. So maybe just be prepared that when the priest says, you know, does anyone have any reasons why they should not be wed? you know, speak now or forever, hold your peace, that we might get a little chatter from her. And uh, let me just say, if that was it, then this wouldn't even really be that good of a story. I mean, it would have been a pretty good story. But let me just say that she does something much worse than that. She doesn't just, like, that would make a little bit of sense, but what she does is actually insane. So Aiden's like, okay, whatever, I'm prepared for this. Like, I'm aware that this is something that might happen. Like, I'll just deal with it if it happens, right? So sure enough, uh, Aiden is just, I don't know. He's ready. He's ready for it. He's ready for anything. He's getting prepared. And uh, yeah, anyways, let's go to the day of the wedding itself. So the day of the wedding itself, um, it's like they wake up pretty early because I don't know if you guys can relate to this, but I don't know when I'm really nervous slash excited because like being nervous and excited is very similar emotion actually. But when I'm really nervous or excited for something, I just can't sleep the night before. Like I am, or not even I can't sleep, but I just get up really early. Like whenever I have a massive exam and I'm worried about it, it doesn't matter if I get six hours, 10 hours, or one hour of sleep, I will wake up super early. I can't really sleep like late that much, which is good on, ma- on major exam days. But so anyways, Aiden and his wife are up right away. Yeah, but uh, anyways, right, uh, so the day of, they get there, they're ready, and just, okay, so this was a pretty big event, meaning that they had a lot of people coming and so just for future reference for later on in the story, I want to let you know that they hired a security guard. Just, just for precaution's sake, they found one that wasn't crazy expensive. A lot of family members were really cool and they were contributing to the budget. So they had a little bit of money to spend and they thought, okay, let's just so many people here. We don't know what could happen. Just for the sake of it, let's get a security guard. Boy, did that help them out later, but you're going to have to sit around and see to see why. So anyways, right, yeah, Aiden, Caroline, Super excited, super nervous. They separate to go, like, get ready because I don't think you're supposed to see each other before you walk the aisles after a certain point. And uh, Aiden is there, and he's kind of, like, chilling with the other, like, with the best man and the other guys there. A lot of his high school friends, college buddies, work buddies, you know, all those type of people, right? And that's when he hears a knock on the door. But it's not a normal knock. Like, a normal person would knock, like, knock, knock, knock. This was... Like, it's just like, whoa, okay, bro, chill out, bro. So they open the door, and it is the Karen mom. And she's like, Aiden, I'm telling you, this woman has a ball. She needs to be, no, don't do it, Aiden. No, I am your mother. You must listen to me. You must listen to me now. You are a little boy, and I know more than you. You are not going to marry this woman if it's the last thing I do. I will not stop at anything. I'm giving you one more chance, Aiden. One more chance, or I will stop it myself. And Aiden's like, whoa. Chill the frick out, bro. Take a chill pill. Mom, like, come on. Chill out. Like, we've been talking about this forever, and I'm not changing my mind, especially not 30, like, 30 minutes before I'm walking out there to get married. 
Look, I wasn't even sure if I wanted to invite you for this reason alone, but I did because you are my mother, and that means a lot to me alone. Please don't ruin this special day for me. And the Karen almost seems like she agreed, or not agreed, but it almost seems like she was like not going to do anything because she kind of calms down. She's like, okay, well, I respect that decision. And she walks out. So normally most people think, oh, well, bet. Like she actually is going to like chill out for once, but no, <laughs> no. Yeah, so let's go to the actual, like the wedding ceremony itself. So everyone was in the pews, except for the Karen. She was missing. And when Aiden was up there, waiting for, you know, his wife to be walked down the aisle by her dad. Aiden was kind of surveying the crowd, looking at the audience, just seeing who was there and really kind of just looking where, I don't know, really just looking where his mom is because he's like, oh God, what's she going to do? And she was missing. And Aiden was both worried, confused. And he had a lot of like, part of him was like, okay, thank God she maybe left knowing that, you know, maybe she didn't want to witness me marry this girl. And she just wanted to dip, which he was like, that's a little sad, I guess. Like, I feel like I want my mom here at my own wedding ceremony. But the other part of him was like a little worried because he's like, well, she's not here, meaning I can't keep an eye on her. So she could be up to literally anything. And truth was, she was up to something. That was pretty bad, dude. Yeah, so eventually, you know, uh, Aiden sees, you know, his wife being walked down the aisle. It's the whole ceremony. They get to the point where the priest is like, all right, you know, say your vows. And they go through and they say your vows. And it's beautiful. It's great. The atmosphere is lovely. Everyone in the crowd is like tearing up. They're like, oh my God, the, my little, my little Aiden is all grown up now. <laughs> all that kind of stuff, right? It's great. Um, so that's when the priest is, says, if anyone has any reason why these two should not get together or be married or be wed or whatever, speak up now. And Aiden just had a huge knot in his stomach. Because when he said that, he remembered exactly what his dad said, which was, you know, if your mom, hey, son, like your mom's like not super happy about this and you know how she is. And, you know, if she's going to say something, it's probably going to be now. It's probably going to be at that point. So Aiden kind of just braces for impact for like a barrage of screaming coming from the audience. However, he's chilling, bro. He doesn't hear anything. And that's when the priest, priest is like, all right, like you may now kiss the bride. Aiden should have been a bit more prepared because uh, this is where things all went wrong. So that is when the Karen, you know, kind of like, think of like a church because that's where this wedding was held, right? Think about at the very end of the church, like how there's big doors, which is how you uh, will go walk into it. So Aiden watch hears as these two big doors burst open and he looks up and he sees his Karen mom standing at the very end and with the doors are opened up and in her hand is a big old fire extinguisher and she screams not today and she starts running well kind of like waddle jumping or whatever <laughs> i mean she's a she's kind of a chungus karen but anyways she starts she screams not today and she starts extinct letting go the like spraying the fire extinguisher all over the crowd as she's sprinting or sprinting, whatever, Chungus Karen's sprinting type, right? As she's running, waddling down the aisle, spraying it everywhere on everyone. And eventually after spraying everyone, she gets to the bride and groom and shows them no mercy and <laughs> sprays them all with the fire extinguisher. And that's when the security guard actually comes in clutch. He was a little late to the party for sure. But that's when the security guard basically tackles the Karen and drags her out of there. So yeah, they're at a situation now that everybody is covered in fire extinguisher and the whole thing is basically ruined. So uh, they have to think really quickly. So almost immediately, uh, Aiden goes, gets the microphone and says, hey everyone, so that's my mom. <laughs> and they all kind of laugh a little nervously, a little awkwardly, whatever, right? So they all laugh about it and he says, look, we're just gonna finish this wedding ceremony some people don't want us to be together, but we're not going to let that keep us apart, right? And he looks at, you know, Caroline, and she kind of smiles at him. And it's one of those situations where it's like, it doesn't have to be perfect. And being sprayed by a fire extinguisher by a crazy Karen is definitely not the definition of perfect in everyone's book. But sometimes imperfect stuff is just how it is. And, you know, kind of how it was actually 
quite a beautiful moment after that. It was almost as if the Karen made the ceremony even more touching because through it could have been totally ruined at that point. They could have just been like, ah, screw this or whatever. We'll just do it later. But no, they finished up the wedding ceremony and they walked down the aisle covered in like a uh, fire extinguisher and everyone burst out in applause and whatever. And they're walking out of, out of the the church covered in fire extinguisher. And there's some passerby people that were looking like, hey, bro, what? It's a little sus over there because everyone's covered in white foam. It's like, oh, bro, what? Uh, and eventually they get into their car. It's, it's, the whole thing's ruined, right? A fire extinguisher everywhere. But they couldn't care less because they're about to start a new chapter of their life.